Hey everyone, how you doing? Happy Thursday. All right, so I figured I would do this video. Um, found it online, so I figured we go through it. Normally, I'll go through a video, maybe not the whole way, but I'll at least watch like a half or three quarters of it to kind of figure out, you know, what it's about, and then you know, rewind it and go through it. Typically, just one time I'll go through it and just get a quick idea, and then I'll run through it and do the commentary. But um, this one I'll do a little bit differently. So for this one. All I'm going to do is um, I've watched like maybe not even two minutes. I literally started this thing. I've heard this talked about quite a few times, obviously, um, but I haven't actually watched this whole video. So I'll do it, you know, the first time and we can experience it together. And I'm, I'm sure we'll be terrified. So let me bring this over. Uh, all right. So let's start it up and I'll just give my commentary as we go through this. Get an idea of how things are going in North Korea. Okay. 아니면 북한 정권에 대해서 어, 범죄를 저지른 사람들에 대해서 그 당사자는 물론 그리고 가족에 대해서 So one person in your family does something wrong in Kim's eyes or in the regime's eyes, right? Not something wrong in God's eyes, but something wrong in Kim's eyes or, or his regime. They take it out on the entire family, right? You ever had like a black sheep in your family? You know, everyone in your family is like rock solid, but you just got this one person who's kind of a knucklehead and wants to go their own way and doesn't take direction, doesn't take guidance, doesn't have a relationship with God. They just kind of stray off the path and, you know, do their own thing and they end up getting in trouble. So basically in North Korea, I guess if that happens and, and they do something wrong in the regime's eyes, then they take it out on your entire family. So basically, right, the sins of one person can be taken out on the entire family, which is ludicrous. It doesn't make any sense at all. Prison camp. North Korean prison camp. North Korea is one of the most isolated and secretive countries in the world. First off, look at this, right? Look at those gigantic pictures you have for people to stare at. You're so important, you need to put those gigantic pictures at so all your citizens can look at it. Why do you think you're, you're such a big deal? Why do you think you're so important? All right? Christ doesn't need a bunch of signs up all over the place, so why do you? Look at this. That says you something right away, right? That tells you something. If your leader loves to have their face plastered up everywhere and loves to have their name on buildings and loves to have statues and things like that, uh, your leader has a problem with vanity and pride. Big time. So let's see how that plays out. The Democratic People's Republic. All right. I've seen her like once or twice on the news. I don't know anything about her. I don't, I don't know much about her at all, to be quite honest. I've just seen her on the news. I think that's his protege. She's coming up. And I don't, I don't know if that's his sister or like cousin or who that is, some family member. But I can just tell you from looking at that face, I don't think she has anything good in her heart from what I can tell. like, And it's kind of unfair to say, right, because I'm just taking a quick glance at her, just the way she's walking with that smirk on her face. Um, she doesn't strike me as a very nice person. I think she potentially could be quite evil, just from that look. But we'll see how this plays out. And the fact that he chose her says everything, right? He's evil, from what I understand, from what I see on the news and the prison camps and things like that, and the fact that he starves his people to death. Um... But uh, let's see. But but he picked her, right? So already, I know she's suspect. But just look at that look. There's just a look. You can just see it. Like when someone's like got evil intent, they have a look just like that. The only thing they're missing is like the little tail, you know, flicking around. But like I said, I'm just taking a glance here. Maybe she's a great, nice person. I, I don't know. But God knows. So whether she is nice or not, God knows of Korea, DPRK, has a rigid and... Here we go again, right? You need people to have big statues of you to what? So they can honor you? So they can give you... They can worship you, essentially, right? It looks like a golden calf, doesn't it? Look at them. They look like two big golden calves right there and that everyone can sit around and worship. Because that always works out so well. Brutal regime, which Brutal. maintains control over its citizens through an extensive network of surveillance, propaganda. Yeah, technology. Technology's, it can be great, right? 
I can get messages out like this across the world without leaving you know, my bedroom. So it's nice. Technology can do good things. But in the hands of a regime and smartphone technology and the fact that everything leaves a digital footprint, everything, like he can sit there and monitor everything. And now you have artificial intelligence. You can have combing through all the data. Um, yeah, it's quite scary. And now with all that access and the fact that we're all glued to our phones and our computers, like everything that he wants to know about people, his citizenry, the ones that have electricity and, and computers, he can know about them, right? And for someone like that to have information, access to that kind of information is horrible because as far as I can tell, he's quite an evil person. And I'm sure that will play out as we watch this video. Uh, but let's see. The threat of punishment. This video highlights... Look at this. Look at these two big golden calves. Right? You've got him sitting there. Shh! Be quiet. You've got him sitting there. Look at this. Look how small these people are. Right? His pride is so puffed up that he needs these gigantic golden calf statues that everyone can sit around and worship. Hey! Hey! Stop! That everyone can sit around and worship. And look at all these flowers and everything. If your leader needs this kind of attention and worship, if your leader requires worship, there's something wrong with that person, right? That's a core issue that they're having. You shouldn't need worship like that. No one does. The only one you worship is God. And it's not like you need to do something elaborate like I've seen in Catholic services where they get down and like getting on the ground and getting up and getting down again. Like I've gone to a Catholic service once, maybe twice, but I can't go anymore. Like I just, the last time I went, I vowed like I would never go back. Nothing, you know, it's just, it's not, that doesn't feel like worship to me. It almost feels like a penance that I'm paying, having to like get up and get down. And, and the service itself was very dry. And you, you know, I like to worship music, even though that's got its own issues too. But I don't want to get off on a tangent. So let's keep going. So this guy wants these big, gigantic golden calves that everyone can stand around and worship. So that tells you a lot about Kim right there and his entire regime. Most insane punishments meted out in North Korea. One public execution in North Wow public execution probably to instill fear in people that if you try to go against this regime in any way number one he'll probably throw you in a prison camp or murder you in public so everyone can see that that's awesome people really need to see that hey shh! people really need to see that and as far as like executing people in general like capital punishment I understand that people do vile horrible acts hey vile, horrible acts, right, that deserve massive punishment. But you can leave that up to God. God will take care. You know, once their vessel expires, God will sort out anything that needs sorting out. So that's not an issue. Hopefully it gets sorted out while they're on earth, which can be done, you know, through an entire life in prison. Life in prison is pretty horrible. You know, I've only gone to jail one time in my life, and it was only overnight. Hey! And it was only overnight, but it felt like a week. That's how horrible it was for me. The whole experience of losing your freedom and, you know, losing choices and options and things like that. It was, it was bad. It was enough to fix me. So capital punishment, I know it makes sense. Like the whole eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That's a really horrible way to live, right? Because none of us would have eyes or teeth, you know? Not that I poked out any eyes or teeth, but you get what I mean. Like it's, it turns into a tit for tat and it just never stops. So if someone's in prison for the rest of their life, that's pretty much the most horrible thing you need to do to them. Other than that, you know, they're, they're going to get old, their body's going to expire, and they're going to spend the rest of a life in a cage, you know, with no options, surrounded by people that are probably pretty rough, I'd have to guess. So, you know, they've made a lot of mistakes in their lives. We'll, we'll put it that way. So some of those people turn around in prison, you know, they hit rock bottom, and they decide that, uh, this path really isn't working for me and they decide to get in line with God and you know walk the narrow path and change their ways so prisons you know, full of people like that and full of people that are like you know what I don't care there is no God there are no rules I'll do whatever feels good to me and I'll deal with the consequences and unfortunately for those people um, the latter is true they will deal with those consequences here on earth and after they pass so hopefully they come around um, but yeah, public executions, absolutely unnecessary. It's barbaric. And you don't really, as far as capital punishment, you don't need to do anything like that. 
let God take care of that. Once their body expires, trust me, uh, that's not the finish line. Like it's a very long journey. And if you live a horrible life, you know, what you do to others will be done to you. So that, that's all you need to know. But this is completely unnecessary. You've got people watching this and he's not doing this, you know, for the betterment of society. He's doing it to scare them to death, to let them know that if you do anything that I disagree with, I will kill you. And then I might even kill your family because I'll put your quote unquote sins, right? As far as Kim is concerned against your family and friends and relatives, I'm sure. Korea public executions are held to instill fear and maintain yeah, exactly. strict obedience to the regime. Mm -hmm. oh. That's the thing. The so instead of being like an amazing leader that people admire for the right reasons, like you take care of your citizens, you're making sure they get the education they need, they have all the public you know, facilities and transportation and electricity and whatever else they need, food, instead of being just an amazing leader, and helping to negotiate different parties and keep everyone together and make sure everyone's provided for and they're happy and healthy and they're free. Instead of doing all that and being admired for the right reasons, he wants to be worshipped. And he wants to be worshipped out of fear because he realizes that he can't provide all those things that people need because he's really not equipped for the job. You know, if he was, the country would be in better shape. And to be quite honest, if you're an amazing leader, you don't need to rule with an iron fist like that because it's, it's not required. People will listen to you because they realize that you have, you know, their best interests are on your mind, right? You're worried about, you know, their outcome. So you don't need to rule with an iron fist when you rule like that, when you are a leader. So he hasn't really, he doesn't understand that. So instead, he just rules through intimidation and fear, which will only get you so far. People will abide by those rules, um, you know, just far enough to not get hurt. But it's a lot different when they just respect you as a leader and they'll do what you ask because they realize it's in their betterment. Result in a public execution. 27 people since 2011. This is, when was this from? Three months ago. So 27 people since 2011. Publicly executed. That's rough. Can you imagine kids watching that and then being mentally scarred for the rest of their life and having nightmares about it? Ranging Sick from person. political crimes to petty theft. Petty theft's going to get you elect. Going to get you basically shot to death in front of everyone. <clears throat> That's crazy. Wow. And political dissent. So basically opposing his regime, totalitarian Thousands regime. Thousands of people, including children, are often forced to witness these horrifying spectacles, which involve methods such as firing squads or hanging. Kids have to watch this. And this, this is terrible that people have to grow up in these kind of conditions. Public executions serve to remind citizens of the consequence. Look at this. This guy looks like he's happy. This guy looks like he's having a good time. This guy's over here smoking. Keep smoking, buddy. You know that stuff causes cancer, right? All right. Let's see what happens. This is of defying the regime and are carried out to deter others from committing similar acts. Public executions are often conducted without any formal trial. Oh yeah, warm, warm beer, I think it was. Uh, I think he took down like a poster in a hotel, something like that. And whatever they did to him um, was probably some of the most horrible things you can do to a human being. Because I remember when he came back and they got him off the plane and his, his body had just basically shut down and he was in some kind of shock or something. I mean, it, I don't know if something had happened in his brain or I don't know what happened, but... The way they treated him, they treated him like he was in hell. Like they basically created hell on earth for him for what I understand was taking a poster from a hotel. From what I remember from the story. <clears throat> They're sick. ...them arbitrary and devoid of any semblance of justice. The accused may be dragged from their homes, forced to confess under duress, and then summarily executed in front of their friends. Right. I wouldn't trust any confession that comes out of North Korea. Because when you treat people like this, and you drag them out of their homes, and you do everything else that Kim does to people, probably starve them to death, whatever kind of tortures, I'm sure we'll get to that. But I wouldn't trust any kind. You can beat a confession out of anyone, I'm sure. Right? You can make someone confess. You put someone under enough pain, they'll admit to anything just to make the pain stop. It doesn't mean that they did it. It just means that they want the pain to stop. And then you're never going to get to recant your story because they'll come in and shoot you to death family and neighbors 
The shocking nature of these public displays is intended to create a pervasive atmosphere of fear, ensuring yeah. that citizens remain submissive to the state. As part of the psychological warfare waged by the regime, the... That's what it is. That's psychological warfare. You want them so terrified and scared that they would never dare say anything about you, right? He could ask all the citizens right now, am I wearing a white coat? And just stare at them, and they would all say, yes, you're wearing a white coat. Even though that coat is as black as coal. Public execution process is deliberately designed to maximize suffering and humiliation. For humiliation and suffering. That's the kind of person you're dealing with. The condemned are often forced to wear signs detailing their crimes, which Alleged may include crimes. anything from watching foreign films to a... That's a crime, watching a foreign film? ...to flee the country. Attempting to flee. I wonder what the crime is for watching YouTube in North Korea. This practice serves to ostracize the individual from their community. Wow, look at this. You know, sometimes you can find hell on earth. That looks that looks rough. Compounding the trauma of their impending death. In recent years, there have been reports of particularly gruesome and unusual methods of execution being employed by the North Korean regime. What is this? Sitting around, so happy. These people are all sitting around with their guns, their gold emblems on there. Look at him, worshipping him with this, all this gold junk on the wall. Look at this. And he requires this, you know? Look at all this. Oh, sit around and look at me. And he doesn't even he doesn't even want to look at him. He just wants to look at the camera and smile while they're all worshipping him with their pistols out. This guy's got a fist bump going on in the background. Look at this. Is that the kind of person you think should be leading anything? No. One such method is death by anti-aircraft gun. Which entails tying the victim to a target and firing high caliber. Oh my goodness. Why? Just to watch their body get blown apart and the blood and guts and eyeballs and bones and everything just go everywhere? That doesn't that's not even practical. That is just having fun while you're slaughtering people. Pounds at them from a short distance. This form of execution is both brutal and extravagant. Yeah, look at him. Obviously, this is just a cartoon or whatever, animation, but if this guy sits around and watches people get blown up with anti-aircraft guns, that is a sick, deranged person who has been living off his own accolades for a long time. That is insane. It's an evil person. Like I said, you know, if you want something to happen to you, do it to someone else. That's kind of how the system is designed in a you know, very simplistic way. Designed to send a clear message to anyone considering opposing the regime. There have been instances of mass public executions where dozens of individuals are executed simultaneously. These events are orchestrated to maximize their impact on the population. Right, to instill fear. That's it. And apparently so he can enjoy it. Right? This guy likes to sit around when people get destroyed with anti-aircraft guns. So I'm sure he enjoys it. He loves the power. He feels like God. He like he's God and this is his little kingdom. Brother, buddy, if your kingdom looks like that, you're not God. You might be the devil, but you're not God. The intention of instilling a sense of collective guilt and fear among the devil populace. Devil wanna be anyway. Witnesses to these events are not only traumatized by the sight of multiple deaths, but are also reminded that they too could be subjected to similar punishment if wow. they fail to comply with the regime's dictates. Two, three, generations of punishment. North Korea employs a policy of... You know what's funny about this? I just told you I'm starting to read the Bible over again, so I'm back in the Old Testament. Oof, not a fan. It's got stuff like this in there. Basically, you're going to punish people for three generations, you know, for committing sins against God or, or upsetting God. That is insane. But honestly, I, I could pull out scripture that says the same thing. You know, from that Bible, I could go get it right now and find it because it's in there. Because I'm going through it and I'm essentially marking, like I've got two different pens. One is like, oh, that, that sounds okay. And the other one is like, absolutely not. This is in the absolutely not category. So, 
you know, this is almost as bad as something. Like, I would expect to see something like this in the Quran, but <clears throat> trust me, it's in the Bible. I'm going through it right now. And now this guy, this, this crazy guy, he's using it too, right? Three generations of punishment. Commit a crime. Your children and grandchildren will also receive the full blunt of punishment. And you know what? I could go get that Bible right now and I could back that up with the scripture. I could give you the book and verse. That's why that's scary. That book is scary. Like I said, start off with the New Testament. The Old Testament, it almost, I see a lot of parallels between that and the Quran, just that whole time period where people live like this, basically, right? Stuff like this. You commit a crime, number one, the only crimes that really matter are the crimes that God deems are sins. Those are the ones you really need to, to worry about. But a lot of the time, your countries will have similar ones if they're based on like Judeo-Christian values. Um, so a lot of the times, you know, some of those will be similar. You know, don't murder, don't steal, things like that. But, you know, you could also use it for the other reason. You could go through that book, especially in the Old Testament, and find lines just like this, <clears throat> where it says you're going to like, you know, punish three generations of people for the sins of one person. That's insane. Every family has got like it, probably one person at least that's like straight off the path and they want to do their own thing and they want to act evil. Hopefully it's just a small time period in their life and you get back on track before you die, but not everyone does. But yeah, this is insanity. Three generations of punishment. Children born in prison are raised as prisoners because their blood is guilty. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. That's about as dumb as the caste system in India. All right? That is ridiculous. You can be the child of a murderer, right? And you can turn out to be the best person in society. A lot of it has to do with your upbringing and your surroundings and the environment you're raised in and the resources available to you and how much love people show you, you know, around you. It's, it's not your blood that's guilty. Three generations of punishment, wherein entire families, including grandparents, parents, and children, are imprisoned for the crimes of a single family member. Imagine being that person. This policy is based on the belief that political dissidents and their families are tainted and must be purged from society to maintain the purity of the nation. Kim, you must know now that this isn't going to last. There's no way God is going to let you continue to do this to your people. No way. As a result, multiple generations are often subjected to a lifetime of forced labor and horrific living conditions in labor wow. camps, where they face starvation. Oh, man. Look at how many people they have in that cell. Starvation. Torture, and often death. This policy extends the responsibility for a crime to relatives who may have had no knowledge or involvement in the alleged wrongdoing. Can you imagine that? Someone in your family, your brother or nephew or whatever, like they go out, I don't know, some kind of whatever Kim would deem an issue, right? You talk against the regime. You say, hey, you know, Kim, you're, you're a terrible boss. You're not very good at running your country. And then you and your kids and your grandkids end up in prison camp because of that, for speaking the truth. As a result... Entire families are uprooted and subjected to the horrors of labor camps, oh my solely gosh. because of their blood ties. This practice has a chilling effect on society, as it ensures oh, that so. even the most private acts of defiance can have devastating consequences for loved ones. The concept of collective punishment is deeply ingrained in North Korean society. All right, so even if you wanted to say something and you wanted to speak out and you were okay, like, hey, I'm going to speak out against Kim... And if he finds out a way to kill me, so be it. I'll die. It's fine, right? Because I'm doing what I think God would want me to do. So if you end up paying the price for it, it's just the price you have to pay, right? That's divine service. But this is different, right? Because it's not just you, right? He's going to go find people in your family to hurt. Even if you're dead, he's going to go round them up. And he's going to hurt you know, your son or your, your, your whole family, right? Your, your daughter or your son, their kids. This guy's awful roots tracing back to the country's Confucian heritage. This has allowed the regime to exploit cultural norms to justify... There he is. There he is. He needs all that adoration. Get that pride pumped up a little bit more. Right? Wants all that worship. And I think that's his little protege there, is it not? I think that's her. ...the imprisonment of entire families for the actions of one individual. As a result, 
Many North Koreans live in constant fear that their actions could endanger their loved ones, yeah. further strengthening the regime's control over its citizens. Within the confines of the... Li I mean, Kim, if you end up watching this, wouldn't you rather people liked you because you were great at managing the country and you were great at fostering freedom and the ability to work and you know making sure everything's provided for for your citizens wouldn't you want to be worshiped for the not worshiped because worship is bad no matter what but wouldn't you rather be appreciated for just being a really good manager of the country instead of being a dictator which is short-lived and is not going to help you once you pass on I mean you might want to think about that think about the long term camps, families endure deplorable conditions, with overcrowded and unsanitary living quarters being the norm. Access to medical care is virtually non-existent, and wow. diseases such as tuberculosis and pneumonia run rampant, claiming <sighs> countless lives. The psychological impact of the three generations of punishment policy is immeasurable, with families living on... That's insanity, right? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard of, and it's in the Bible. The Old Testament, you got to be careful in there. That thing is rough. I've still got a long way to go before I get back into the New Testament again, but it's, it's I have to read it, right? Because if I hadn't gone back through it, even though I prefer the New Testament, you know, you got to go back to the Old Testament because I see stuff like this and you see the parallels between this, between the Quran, you know, between Moses, between Muhammad, you know, this three generations, it's in there, multi generational punishment. So constant shadow of guilt, despair, and hopelessness. Three, forced labor camps. Mm, here we go. Forced labor camps, known as Kwan Lee So, Kwan Lee so. are secretive prisons where political prisoners and their families endure unimaginable horrors. Detainees are subjected to backbreaking work, including mining, logging, and farming. And I assume they don't have any medical care, no antibiotics, nothing. You know, whatever happens to you if you break something, snap something, pull something... You just got to deal with it. They're not going to help you at all. And who even knows how much they're feeding you, right? You're probably starving to death at the same time that they're working you to death. And somehow this guy's able to sleep at night. And I don't know if you've seen Kim, but I don't think... I'm not picking on people, right? I put on a few pounds here recently myself, but he doesn't look like he's missed too many meals. So it's it would be odd for a leader of a country to be that, um, you know, full of food, to be that healthy. And to sit out in front of people that are starving to death and they look at you and they can tell that you know you you have a refrigerator like you have access to food so it's very odd for up to 20 hours a day with little to no food the conditions within these camps are inhumane wow with prisoners suffering from malnutrition disease and brutal physical abuse yeah. It is estimated that tens of thousands of people are currently held in these camps across North Korea. Survivors of the labor camps have provided harrowing accounts of the extreme brutality and depravity they have endured. What choice do they have, right? If you're in the military, you're going to do it just because you don't want your entire family to get thrown in one of these camps. I mean, it, it's probably just as bad for the people in the camp as it is the people working there. I would hope if they have any kind of moral ethics or any kind of moral compass you know it should kill them to do what they have to do to these people every single day but like i said i don't know them all i don't know what's in their heart god does and when they die it's all going to get sorted out many prisoners are subject to beatings and other forms of torture by guards who have almost complete authority over the lives of those in their charge in some instances Prisoners have been forced to watch the execution of fellow inmates, serving as a brutal reminder of the consequence. But then again, there are probably some of them that are smiling just like that person in this cartoon right here, right? You would hope that it kills them to have to work in that environment, but I'm quite certain there are some of them that are evil aligned that enjoy it and love that power. Do unto others as you would like things done to you. So... Be careful in how you treat others because in some ways that's going to come back on you, right? So if you want good things to happen to you in the long run, it's very simple. Do good things for others. Treat people well. Because, you know, what you do to other people has a funny way of getting brought back on you. ...of disobedience. 
The forced labor camps not only serve as a form of punishment, but also function as an essential component of the North Korean economy. The products of slave labor, such as coal, oh, nice. timber, and agricultural <laughs> goods, nice. are used to sustain the regime. So he's got even more reason to throw more people into these prison camps because it's free labor. It's not like you have to worry about the health insurance. So the more people you throw in prison, the more cheap labor you have. ...are sometimes even exported to other countries, generating revenue for the government. This exploitation of forced labor is a flagrant violation of international human rights laws and an appalling example of state-sanctioned modern-day slavery. Yeah, but that's when international trade gets, you know, it gets a little interesting, right? Because if the people buying these goods, I don't know about North Korea, I don't know how much they export, but like other countries like China, right? Let's say China's using slave labor, but then some other country is getting products for like half the price they could get them for if they made them internally. How many questions would those countries ask when they're importing those goods, right? How critical are they going to be about figuring out how those people are treated in China? Because what if China's like, hey, those are my employees. Don't worry about them. That's none of your business. All you need to worry about is you're getting these widgets at 50 cents instead of paying a dollar a piece to make them in your own country. So the country importing those goods, how many questions are they really going to ask? All they care about is they're getting those widgets, whatever they are, right? For 50 cents on the dollar. But you don't know how those people are being treated in North Korea or in China that you're, you know, those countries you're importing from. I don't know how many imports we're getting from North Korea. I don't think any, hopefully. But, um, but you know, something like China, right, where their slave labor still happens. How critical are those companies going to be, especially for like shoes and clothing and things like that, right? I mean, the countries that are importing them, they're concerned with profits, right, retained earnings, things like that. So do they really care about how those employees are treated over there? All they care about is, hey, I'm getting this shirt for whatever, like 20 cents, and I'm going to sell it. I'm going to make this much money for my shareholders. Same thing with shoes and clothing and things like that. But you have to really wonder, like, what are those conditions like in those other countries where those sneakers are coming from? It matters. Despite international condemnation... That's a nice painting. There's Kim standing over a country that's looks like it's burning it on fire. I don't know what historical event this is, but it's nice. That's what it feels like to me, right? This guy's up on the hill, very proud, very vain. If, if that's even him, maybe that's someone even further back. But you're sitting there and your country is basically starving to death. It looks like people are just beating and hurting each other and it's on fire. It's an interesting painting. An increasing awareness of the horrors occurring within North Korea's labor camps, the regime has shown no signs of easing its brutal treatment of prisoners. In fact, satellite images have revealed that the labor camp system has expanded in recent years, I mean, they got a bunch suggesting of those. that the North Korean regime is determined to maintain its grip on power through fear, repression, and brutal punishment. Instead of just being an amazing leader and providing for your constituents, right? Instead of doing that, you want to rule like an evil dictator. Look at this. I don't know what they're doing there, but it's horrible, whatever they're doing. I don't know what they're pouring in that person's mouth, but they're just torturing people and they're having fun. Like That looks like hell on earth. Like a North Korean prison camp, that's probably about as close as you can get to hell on earth, except for maybe some ones in other countries, right? But that looks pretty bad. Four, starvation and torture. The North Korean regime uses starvation and torture as punishment and means of control. Well, yeah, no In doubt. detention centers and labor camps, food is often scarce, and prisoners are frequently subjected to brutal torture methods. Torture methods include water torture, electric shock. Electric shock. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. He's got the probes, like, in the arms. That's crazy. I don't know what's going on here. Is that a stress position? I'm not sure what that is. And the pigeon torture. Pigeon is that the pigeon? Where the victim's hands are tied behind their back and they are forced to remain in a crouching position for hours or days. For days? Oh man. And they're probably not feeding you or giving you water, so your entire muscular system is gonna lock up in spasms. These heinous acts are intended what to break the spirit person. of those imprisoned Disgusting. and solidify the regime's control over its citizens. The only consolation is that, trust me, 
God is just and God is fair. And when you treat people like this, God will make sure that the scales get balanced. So people like this pay the price. Starvation is not only a means of punishment, but also a method of control employed by the regime. Withholding food and basic necessities serves to weaken both the physical and mental resilience of prisoners, trying to making break them you. more susceptible to manipulation and coercion. Yep, I'm trying to In break In a perverse you. sense, food becomes a tool of power within the labor camps, yep. with guards often withholding rations as a means of exerting control over prisoners. <sighs> Survivors of North Korean labor camps have recounted horrifying tales of the torture they have endured at the hands of the regime. One such account is of a prisoner who was suspended from the ceiling by her wrists and ankles, only to be beaten relentlessly by guards. Another no. survivor recalls being forced to kneel on sharp stones with a wooden rod placed behind his knee. What is he got his head in a box? Causing excruciating pain as the pressure of his body weight crushed the rod into his flesh. <sighs> The use of it's like they sit around and literally devise ways to torture people. They sit around and have like little workshops and try to figure out how they can torture and be as evil as possible um, to people. It's disgusting. And you sit around here and you get gigantic pictures up there so everyone can sit around and worship you like you're important. These brutal and dehumanizing techniques is designed to not only punish, but also degrade and humiliate the victims. Yeah, because Asserting... he thinks he's so much better. That pride is going to fall so far. When you pass on, you'll get to see your life, Kim, and everyone who's part of your regime. You're going to get to look back and experience your life. It's all going to flash in front of your eyes. And you're going to get to see the objective truth of everything that you've done in your entire life before everything gets dished out. So just remember everything that you've done regime's absolute control over their lives. The psychological impact of torture is immense, with survivors often suffering from severe trauma and mental health issues long after their release. The lingering effects of this abuse serve as a constant reminder of the regime's power and control, instilling fear in both the victims and those who hear their stories. 5. Chemical and Biological Experiments there are numerous accounts of the North Korean regime conducting chemical and biological experiments what? on human subjects. These hor Oh, I can't even imagine. They're literally trying to find the most painful ways to kill you and hurt you and degrade you. So I can only imagine what they might try to do chemically and biologically. Like I said before, Warmbier, the guy who... The story was, I guess he took a poster off the hotel. When he came back, I don't know what they did to him, but it was horrific because he did not come back in the same way he left. Like, it was horrific the way he looked when he came back. So I can only imagine, like, chemically and biologically what they might do to people to test things out. Um, but thankfully, you know, God is the final judge. And God knows everything that you've done your entire life. Everything. What are you doing? So, you know... Um, I'm really glad that I don't have to die having done this to other people. I'm so glad. And I've got the rest of my life to be really, really nice to people because I know how much that's going to benefit me. So to anyone who's done stuff like this to people and continues to do it, just understand that God is real and God is fair and God is just. But, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Keep that in mind. Fine tests often involve the use of deadly nerve agents, such as sarin gas, and are carried out on prisoners and political dissidents. The goal of these experiments is to develop new and more effective means of controlling the population and crushing dissent. Survivors of these experiments have pro to stay in power. Your power, you only have that temporary power while you're here for as long as you have it while you're here. You're not necessarily going to have all that power the entire time that you're here. But even if you did, that would only be while you're here. You can't stop your body from expiring. It's going to happen. So, you know, the bill's going to get paid. And you're going to have to pass on. And like I said, you're going to see everything that you've done in your life. 
kind of flash through in front of your eyes. You're going to see it, and you're going to understand the truth of what you've done. Um, and then, you know, you'll, you'll get whatever you deserve. So, treat people and animals and the planet very well, because God created them, and they're God's creations, and they should be treated with that level of respect. Not gassed to death and starved to death and tortured to death. I did chilling testimonies of their experiences. In some cases, prisoners have been locked in small chambers and exposed to lethal doses of poisonous gas, while in others, they have been injected with deadly pathogens or subjected to radiation exposure. The lack of regard for human life and the blatant violation of medical ethics in these experiments is a... And because he's got people in prison camps like this, he's got an unlimited number of people that he can experiment on because they're prisoners, right? political prisoners, whatever, he can just sit around and like test out ways to kill them and hurt them. It, you know, like we do with animals here in the U.S., right? When they're testing out medications and things like that, and they want to make sure, or makeup stuff, they want to see if it's going to hurt people, right? So they'll take the makeup and like jam it in the animal's eyes and do all kinds of horrible stuff, all right? I've seen things where like monkeys have their heads cut off and they got little electrodes in there and they're kind of testing out things to figure out, you know, what would happen. So it's the same thing here, except he can experiment on humans because he's in North Korea, right? They call it the Hermit Kingdom, so you don't really know what's going on in there. Um, but he's got this unlimited amount of people he can just test things on. You can only imagine what this guy's up to. Testament to the depths of the North Korean regime's cruelty. The use of human experimentation in North Korea represents a gross violation of international human rights standards, including the Nuremberg Code which explicitly prohibits experimentation on humans without their consent. You think he cares? You think G cares or any of these dictators? They don't care about these accords you have or these agreements. They don't matter. Whatever they can do behind closed doors, they will do because they want to do it and they feel like they're little gods and those are their little kingdoms. But they're just short-term employees. In carrying out these atrocities, the regime not only demonstrates its disregard for human life, but also perpetuates a culture of fear and oppression that allows it to maintain its grip on power. International efforts to hold the North Korean regime accountable for these heinous acts have been met with limited success. The secretive nature of the regime, coupled with its isolation from the international community, has made it difficult to obtain accurate information. Yeah, that's warm beer there. Yeah, I guarantee you he wishes he could put that poster back on the wall. Um, what a what a crazy crime. That whole crime, that, that whole story doesn't make any sense at all, to be quite honest. Like, he, all he did was take a poster and they treated him like that? I mean, granted, he was an American, right? So, of course, they're going to do that. Um, but, I don't know, that whole story is just it's a weird one. To treat him like they did, that's... ...and evidence of these abuses. All right. So that's, that's it for that one. Um, yeah. So definitely uh, don't ever go to North Korea. Not until Kim is gone and his little protege. Where is she at? Let me go back to her. Let's see if I can find her. But yeah. It's, um, that's a terrible place. You know, and it's ruled by a dictator. And he's, from what I can tell, I don't know him personally, but if even a quarter of this is true, he's a nasty person. He's done a lot of evil things, and he's going to have to pay for them. You know, if he wants, he's got the rest of his life to try to offset it. Um, but if not, you know, he can just sit around and wait to pass on, and then, you know, then the punishment's going to be dished out, right? It's not for me to do it, you know. It's that's between him and God, and her and God, and, and everyone else in that regime. You know, we're just short-term employees here in these vessels. And what you do to others will be done to you. So, I recommend you treat people really, really well. Treat people well, treat the animals well, treat the planet well. Simple stuff. Take care of your soul. Protect your soul because eternity is a very long time. And you want your journey to be a good one, not a horrific one. So, that's it for now. But just remember, God loves us, wants to provide guidance so that you know, we can take the helm and we can make our journey amazing. And we can help everyone else around us in the process. So, have a great week. Talk to you next time.